Listen to Herbert Marshall transcribed as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, adventure, intrigue, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. The news caused little excitement in the papers or on the air. A sentence or two was enough to inform a disinterested public that Dr. Franz Sarley, convicted Nazi war criminal, had escaped from the mental ward at Strasbourg Military Hospital. And then the incident was forgotten. For who was there to know that this unimportant little episode might result in a major European catastrophe? Might result in World War III? Any word about Sally yet, Chief? Oh, Ken, come in, come in. No, nothing new yet. They've set up a routine search for him. Probably find him heading for the Russian zone of Germany. Maybe they better try Portugal. Portugal? Why should Charlie go there? Well, because the heads of the North Atlantic Treaty are going to meet there in Lisbon. I don't get it, Ken. Chief, do you remember what he was working on for the Nazis during the last war? Oh, how could I forget? The deadliest gas ever invented by man, nerve gas. That's right. But we heard about it in time. Managed to grab both Sally and the gas before the Nazis had a chance to use it. Yeah, I know, but what's that got to do with Lisbon? Chief, I was at Sally's trial when he swore that someday he'd kill the man responsible for seizing the gas. You know who that man is? Well, sure. The chairman of the NATO meeting at Lisbon. The man responsible for the entire defense of Western Europe. Ken. Yes. Good Lord. If he was able to release some of that gas at the NATO meeting, he'd kill the heads of defense for every nation that's... Oh, no. I can't believe it. No, there's no reason on earth to think he'd try anything as fantastic as that. This report came in a few minutes ago, Chief. From Paris. Better read it. Sure. David Bonham, Chief Administrative Aide to the Chairman at the NATO meeting, died suddenly this morning while boarding a plane for Lisbon. Cause of death tentatively diagnosed as an epileptic seizure. So what? Bonham was almost as responsible for stopping Zali from using the gas as the man at Lisbon. Bonham had no previous history of epilepsy... And the symptoms of nerve gas poisoning are identical with those of a seizure. Better keep in touch with me, Ken, from Lisbon. I take it, Senor Thurston, you are traveling to Lisbon on business rather than pleasure, eh? You might call it that, Senor Brava. And this uh, business, it would be connected with the Western Europe defense meeting there, huh? What makes you think that? <laughs> the meeting is so much on my mind. It is possible I leap to an unjustified conclusion. Yeah, it's possible. What's your connection with it, Senor Brava? I am an unofficial goodwill ambassador of the Portuguese government, what you might call a press agent. This meeting is very important from the standpoint of Portugal's public relations. Mm-hmm. How about devoting some of your talent to private relations, Julio? Ill, sir. How could I have been so blind as not to see you get aboard the plane? <laughs> For a most prosaic reason. I did not get aboard until the very last minute. But speaking of the prosaic, I believe that formal introductions come under that heading. Oh, a thousand pardons. May I present Senor Ken Thurston? Senor Thurston, the <laughs> most beautiful and entrancing of all newspaper women... Senorita Ilsa Heller. How do you do, Miss Heller? I will do much better, Mr. Thurston, as soon as Julio brings us cocktails. Cocktails, Ilsa? They are available now in the lounge. And we can drink to the NATO meeting. Oh, but of course. You will join us, Senor Thurston. I can hardly refuse to drink to Miss Heller's toast. Um, a dry martini, please. With an onion, Julio. Well. And I will have the same. Certainly. I shall be right back. May I take Julio's seat while he's gone? That's why you send him away, isn't it? Mm. I am a newspaper woman, Mr. Thurston, after a newsworthy story. And do you think I can supply one? You have before. Contraband smuggling into the Russian zone. The so-called uh, pre youth movement in Berlin. Mm. You know quite a lot about me, don't you? My preference in cocktails, my work. What about this trip of yours to Lisbon? Sorry, Osa. You could be making a mistake. Why? No one stops me from getting a story, even if it is necessary to cooperate with those on the wrong side of the fence. 
What's that supposed to mean? If I cannot get a story from you, perhaps I can get it from Julio Brava. And if not from him, well, there's always Dr. Franz Sarli. Isn't there, Mr. Thurston? So you believe this Dr. Franz Zahle represents a real danger to the NATO meeting? That's right, Colonel Lesteriel. I'm convinced he'll try to murder our men. Our man here. Probably by using nerve gas. It would be not a very discriminatory weapon, would it? If such an attempt were made at the meeting itself, hmm? Yeah. Well, Colonel? Singer Thurston, I have been placed in charge of security for the meeting. I do not take the responsibility lightly. And I can assure you, that all necessary precautions to safeguard the delegates have already been taken. I doubt it, Colonel. Sal is brilliant, insane, and he's a scientist. He'll be one step ahead of every move you and your man will make. Then what precautions would you suggest? The meeting will be held tonight at the University of Camelin. Seen? We've got to keep him out of there. Close the building. Keep it closed until the delegates arrive. Meanwhile, make a security search of every room, every corner, every inch of it. Searching for this Dr. Tsarli. And perhaps a cylinder of nerve gas. That's right. Such a procedure would require a hundred extra men. Disrupt the work of half a dozen government agencies. All on the strength of your story. No, no, Signora. I am afraid that what you ask cannot be. Uh, your pardon. Yeah. A story like this. Un minuto. For you. Oh? Thanks, Colonel. Hello? Hello, Mr. X. Don't say a word about to whom you're talking to whom, but this is Pagan. What? That's right. Pagan Selschmidt. Oh, you'd better meet me outside. Boy, have I ever got some red-hot information for you. Information? Oh, sure. All about Dr. Sarley and nerve gases and stuff. That's right, Mr. X. I'm here in Lisbon working for my cousin Ariba. He figured we could make a killing in slightly used uh, second-hand military secrets. <laughs> so I was hanging around at another building looking for a sucker when I bumped into her. Bumped into who? But that cute little Sahela cookie. Some tootsie, eh, yeah, Mr. X? And she already goes for my accent. I'm still waiting to hear where Dr. Zali comes in. That's right. He's coming into that another meeting to bump somebody up uh, with gas or stuff. Did Elsa tell you that? No, no. She only told me where I could call you. Well, then we talked about old Lang's time. She interviewed me once when I was in the Clinton Hamburg. Well, I was framed, you understand? And... Pagan, if you don't start making sense, sir, help me out. But I... I'm making sense. Hmm. See? Here we are. Where are we? Where the guy lives who knows all about Dr. Sarri. His name is Mendoza, and he's a friend of a cousin of a cousin Arriba's. He, he said he could sell you plenty... Oh, I, I mean, tell you plenty. You were right the first time, cousin Pagan. Well? Don't worry about the thing, Mr. X. Mendoza said we should walk right in if he wasn't home. Uh, he works for the Lisbon Telephone Company, and sometimes he has to go out and hurry up calls, you understand? He... <coughs> oh, Mr. X. Yes. Mendoza? It, it was. Oh, but, but look at him. Oh, what could have done that to him? Nerve gas, Pago. Nerve gas. <laughs> Getting to this university place, Mr. Rex. The meeting ain't started yet. I want to get in and look around before it does. <clears throat> Good evening, Sir Thurston. You were surprised to see the building closed. What happened, Colonel Listeriel? I thought over what you said in my office. I could not afford to take any chances, so I ordered the security search made. And? We found absolutely nothing. Neither Dr. Sarley nor his nerve gas are inside. What about telephone wires? Telephone wires. Yes. Was any installation work done today? Why, yes. Additional facilities were placed in the meeting hall for the convenience of the delegates. By a man named Mendoza? Your details are most exact, Senor Thurston. 
You must have something in mind. A building this size ought to have a utilities conduit for telephone wires, gas and water pipes, and electric cables. It has. Big enough for a man to crawl through, maybe hide in? There is an entrance to it at the edge of the ground. We will check on it at once. Then you believe this telephone man, Mendoza, found Sally down here while installing the wires today? He had to get his information someplace, Colonel. And somebody killed him with nerve gas. I uh, would agree with your theory, uh, except for one thing. We have come to the end of the conduit. Nothing lies ahead but the basement, which we have already searched most carefully. I am afraid your Dr. Charlie simply is not down here. Maybe not, but he was here. What makes you say that? This dust on the wall. Someone has been writing in it, making strange symbols. Yeah. Tal Pizzari sat here doodling while waiting for your security search to end. An old nervous habit of his. As it is of many men. But these symbols are the formula of the nerve gas. And look here. Just below it. 10 p.m. Repeated a number of times. What time is it now? It's uh, 8.45. Are you thinking the same thing I am? I'm thinking that Sally came through this conduit. That he's hiding somewhere in the building waiting to strike. Colonel... We've got exactly one hour and 15 minutes to stop him. We'll return to the man called X in just a moment. A young sailor 2,000 miles from home receives a call that his mother is critically ill. He is needed. He has to take a plane to get there. He doesn't have enough money for the ticket. And so he turns to you because your Red Cross is somewhere near him. If he calls you, answer his call. Help him through your Red Cross. Give and give generously through the 1952 Red Cross Fund Appeal. You answer the call of humanity through your Red Cross. And now Act Two of The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, with Leon Belasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. One hour and 15 minutes. That's all the time Ken Thurston has to stop Dr. Zarley from using his deadly nerve gas. One hour and 15 minutes to prevent the murder of all the men responsible for the defense of Western Europe. And somewhere in the huge rambling building where the NATO meeting is being held, Zarley lies waiting. Waiting for 10 o'clock, the hour he intends to strike. We cannot possibly make another search of the building, Senor Thurston. The delegates are already arriving. There is not nearly enough time. Then we'll have to concentrate on guarding the meeting hall. You know where it is? Main banquet hall, third floor. Yes. I'll go there now. You round up all the additional guards you can find. I'll meet you later. Take the private elevator. It will bring you to the security point. Oh, thanks. Mind if I share the elevator with you, Senor Thurston? Hello, Barbara. What are you doing here? My duties require me to be in many places, senor, including the meeting hall. May I ride up with you? Sure, come on. I noticed that you and Colonel Estoril seem perturbed. Could I do something, perhaps, to uh, alleviate your concerns? There's a button with a number three on it. You might try pushing it. As you wish, senor. Julio! Mr. Thurston, wait! Wait for me! Oh, the beautiful senorita Heller. (laughs) I will try to stop the car. Go back for her. Well, that fixes it, brother. Uh, fixes? You've jammed the controls. The elevator's stuck between floors. Yeah. Why, so it is, yes. Now, how could I have been so clumsy as to do anything like that? That's what I was wondering. There was no alarm button, no phone. I noticed that. Let me see. It is now exactly two minutes past nine. What's time got to do with it? Well, if I were a betting man, Senor Thurston, I would say... It will take at least an hour before we are rescued. 
It will be amusing to learn if I am correct, will it not? If we are not released from here before uh, two minutes past ten... All right, brother, that does it. We can reach that top floor now. Oh, you Americans are so ingenious, senor. A pocket knife, some little effort on the iron grill work of the elevator roof. <laughs> and we are free. Disappointed? In a way, in a way, yes. I lose my bet. It took you only 14 minutes. It is now exactly 9.16. <laughs> Seem to be looking for someone, Colonel Estoril. Oh, uh, Senorita Heller, yes. Uh, Senor Thurston was to meet me here. Something important? I'm still after a good feature story, Colonel. Sounds like you haven't had any luck, Ilsa. Senor Thurston. You are right, I have not. Then why not ask Brava about a stalled elevator? Are you serious? Sure, I'd like to know the truth about it myself. Very well, I will ask Julio. But don't go too far away. We could have other things to talk about. Besides the business of getting stories. What is all this talk about elevators, Senor Thurston? That can wait, Colonel. How are things going here? I have doubled the guards. Every possible entrance is covered. Every person inside that room has been double-checked. I will swear to it that Charlie is not inside, nor has he any means of getting in there. Well, it's 9.23. We'll know in just 37 minutes if you're right. Are you? Are you? Oh, for... <laughs> Hello, Mr. Thurston. When do we eat? I'm hungry as a couple of bears. What the devil are you talking about? The refreshments inside that meeting place, Natch. Boy, will we be able to tear into a couple of steaks or two? Colonel, is food going to be served by the, to the delegates? If you are Dover, some light wines, yes. Why? How will they be brought into the meeting room? Oh, no, senor. <laughs> Dr. Charlie could not be disguised as a waiter. The food would be sent up directly from the kitchen to the banquet hall by dump waiter. A banquet hall dump waiter can be pretty good size, Colonel. How close is your kitchen to that conduit we found? Why, it is practically in the next room. There is only... Senor Thurston. Yeah, come on. Where is it, Colonel? Over there, to the right. Look! It is already on its way to the banquet hall. Take hold of that rope and... It has stopped. Yeah, at the second floor. But the banquet hall is on the third. Maybe we were wrong. Maybe Charlie is just getting on it now. Look, it is going up again. Grab the control ropes. Of course. I, I have stopped it, senor. But there is someone pulling on the rope from above. Someone is... Watch it. I call upon you to surrender, Dr. Charlie. In the name of the Portuguese government, I demand... We cannot get to him as long as he has that gun, Senor Thurston. He won't have it long. Keep him busy until I join him. Join him? Yes, on the second floor. But, but why are you running to anyway, Mr. X? The dumb waiter shout. It opens into that next room. But Dr. Charlie's on board that thing, Mr. X, with guns and stuff. Watch it now. Drop the gun, Doctor. Drop it. Oh. You got him, Mr. X. You got him. Kill. Was kill for revenge. Your king days are over, Charlie. You're all through. No. I am. Gas. Nerve gas. What about the nerve gas? Ten o'clock. We'll kill. Ten o'clock, we... Uh... Charlie. It's... Is he dead, Mr. X? No, unconscious. Well, same thing. He's cooked. Well, <laughs> I guess we got that thing all cleaned up, eh, Mr. X? Not quite, Pega. Huh? Take a look at that dumb waiter. There's no gas cylinder in it. That means it's still hidden somewhere in this building. So it's hidden, so what? Charlie can't set it off. No, but a time mechanism can. Or somebody working with Charlie. And he said he was going to kill at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock? But it's only 9.53. We got plenty of time to find it. We get home with... Oh, oh, Mr. X. Yes. All of seven minutes. (laughs) 
any luck, Colonel? None, senor. I have examined every inch of that dumb waiter shaft. Wherever Charlie has hidden that nerve gas, it is not in there. Uh. And it is now three minutes of ten. Yes. Brr. Give it my goose pimples. Oh, stop shaking, pig. Huh? Hmm? Not going to do any good. Wait a minute. You are shaking. Oh, sure, it's getting cold in here. Cold? The air conditioning system. Of course. Where's the main unit located? In the tower of the building. But we have no time. We've got one chance. The dumb waiter. The dumb waiter? Sure. But Come where? on. Oh, I am with you, senor. Stand here, pig. We're going. Sooner. The perfect way for Charlie to carry out his threat. Release the gas into the meeting hall through the air conditioning system. And now we are too late. Maybe not. But it is only seconds before ten o'clock. We are coming to the end of the shaft. All right, Colonel, here we go. Look! The intake duct with the gas cylinder. Hold it. Don't turn that valve. Don't. It's too late. The gas. Hold your breath, Colonel. Let's have that cylinder. Stand back, Colonel. Some of it got into the room. I am all right, senor. You threw it out of the window in time. But look, the one who was going to... Oh. Yes. Looks like Ilse Heller finally got her story. And it killed her. But I do not understand that beautiful young girl. Why should she do such a mad thing? Some kinds of madness are hereditary. Hereditary? The records show that Charlie had a daughter. I see. What a pity. Two brilliant minds that could have done so much for the world, becoming twisted and warped, ending up like this. Elsa and Charlie couldn't help themselves, Colonel. But there are plenty of others who can, sane men who deliberately try to stir up revolution and war in order to conquer the world and don't realize they're only destroying it. Oh, Colonel, they're the ones who are truly insane. And now, here again is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And my thanks to Lillian Bayef, Will Wright, Gerald Moore, and Robert Boone. Next week, Tanyangika, East Africa, where a trail of terror leads to a blue elephant, and where Pagan sees nothing but pink elephants, and where a man dies only once. Pagan, Leon Blasco, I'm happy to say, so join us, won't you, when next I return, as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music by Milton Charles. Tonight's transcribed story was written by Sidney Marshall. This program is directed by Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. And now, until next week, same time and station, this has Hal Gibney saying goodnight for The Man Called X. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.